Okay, so I just uh, finished editing and posting a uh, recap of a live stream that I just did last week. And so I thought I'd take this opportunity to peel back the curtain a little bit and give you guys some insight into how I would critique my own performance. Um, so the impetus for doing that live stream was that I was working up a new song. Uh, well, not it's not a new song. I was working up a song that I haven't played live before. The song is Fortnite. Uh, it's off a 2004 album. I haven't actually played it since recording it back then. Um, out of the 400 or so songs that I have, you know, we have about 150 of them that we have in the, in the gig book. And every now and then I'll take another one out of the vault and we'll play it one time or a couple times. And then, you know, sometimes they catch on and they become regulars. And other times that's just one that we do on rare occasions. But the process for me to be able to take it to a gig always starts with that. Again, with that many songs, I almost always remember how the melody goes and I remember most of the words but might need a little bit of a reminder sitting in front of me uh, but the chords are a challenge for me to remember if I'm not actively playing those songs so I was at the point where I felt like I've got these chords good enough I can make it through this song I'm not gonna stop and you know there's not gonna be a train wreck but can I do the next phase for me, which is to elevate into being creative about the other parts because the chords are familiar enough that I that they're almost second nature, that I just need a little tiny glance, a little tiny reminder. So I would say the first critique that I have is clearly I'm not quite there. Uh, I spent a lot of time focusing on the chords. I spent a lot of time looking at the lead sheet, reminding myself which chord was next. And as a result, as a consequence, it's kind of like driving by looking at the car that's directly in front of you rather than looking up with your eyes at the horizon and seeing all the lanes, seeing all the moving pieces in your mirrors and everything. Um, you can drive that way, but you have to be pretty conservative about the rest of it. And so, you know, I was defaulting to basically the album version of that song that I was kind of hearing in my mind's ear. Um, as far as the melody went, I didn't get very creative with it, which would be sort of the next thing I would want to do is to be at liberty to alter the melody at will, to hear something new, to anticipate something new, to maybe change a, a note just a little bit or the timing of a note or the dynamics or, you know, kind of how I'm using my breath or take some aspect of something that Gene or Sean is, is doing to, uh, to lay in there and I was not really able to explore that kind of stuff um, so that one it was solid but it needs some work and that's the that's the work that it needs it's just more familiar with more familiarity with the chords will let me lift my eyes and look at the road um, real quick uh, with lost uh, I was happy I was pleased with the little jagged rhythm I was toying with, I need to be mindful that when playing with the band, I am always the timekeeper, no matter which instrument I'm playing, if it's guitar, piano, or drums, I'm the timekeeper, I'm responsible for keeping us, uh, keeping us in time on the beat, and everyone follows me for time. So I have to be careful not to do anything that is confusing, no matter which instrument I'm playing, my fills need to land cleanly. Um, if I'm going to fill over the bar, it needs to be in a way that it's clear that the bar was here. Uh, I can't get too Dave Weckl on things, and not that I'm Dave Weckl, because I'm not. Um, and that jagged rhythm has the potential to make, uh, make Gene or Sean misanticipate what I'm doing and think that I've started to drag. So I need to be a little careful about being uh, more obvious with that one and might need to polish that before rolling it out. But I like it. It's a good idea. Uh, I stopped doing it in the latter verses, but that first verse, that, that's something to, to work up, something to hold on to. Uh, best of days. Um, I don't have much to say about that. 
that's a song that I love. It's a signature song. It was a feature song for years and years and years. And it's kind of, you know, it's one of those kind of, we don't play it much at all anymore. And it's kind of odd, again, with when you write lots of songs, you know, the new songs just sort of tend to naturally nudge the old songs out of the spotlight. And I, you know, I would not have imagined in 2005 that there would ever be a gig where I didn't play Best of Days and Blue is the Moon. And I would not have imagined in 1995 there would ever be a gig where I didn't play, where I didn't end it with too much. Um, and yet, you know, it's been, we've maybe played too much once in the past year, Best of Days twice, Blue is the Moon twice. It's kind of this, this odd, uh, you know, I've been through the cycles of this evolution several times, uh, you know, going all the way back to Rook, would never have imagined there'd be a gig where we didn't play Do You Want It, and now it's, you know, that's like, that's one of the ones that we brought out of the book, <laughs> brought out of the other book uh, when we had the, the Rook reunion, but had never, had not played it at all um, for years. Um, so, you know, that was not a very creative new way of playing Best of Days, but it was a tight, standard delivery of uh of of the song itself happy with that performance i mean basically it's saying that i still got it i could still play that song anytime i want um i would have been a little happier if i'd done something new and exciting with it but that just wasn't in the cards for today and uh but i was sort of feeling out opportunities for it just just didn't happen today so Anyway, I hope that makes sense, my critique. Um, I'll have a, another video up soon with uh, something that I, I want to talk a little, expand on that idea of being someone who's, you know, sort of practicing for a spontaneous performance versus um, turning your gig into a rehearsal. Um, I have some thoughts on that as well, but, you know, this, this video is already much longer than I want it to be, so, um, hey. Thanks for sticking around to the end and uh, take it easy.